petty vigilante racists are back in the news again, but today we revisit the pettiest of them all next. What's poppin' YouTube? It's your boy Mike Powers back with another episode of The Mike Powers Show. So even with a quarantine going on and the entire globe at risk from death, even with social distancing, racists have still found a way to get their racism on. I mean, think about it. You got young black kids being slammed and handcuffed for not adhering to social distancing guidelines. Meanwhile, white people is throwing pity party protests and nobody is being detained. And yes, that is privilege. I'm sure by now you have all heard about the case of Ahmad Arbery down in Georgia, young African American male. They say he was jogging through a neighborhood, was eventually tracked down by what I would call a, a mob of racist vigilantes in a pickup truck and a shotgun too deep with one more filming. Young Mr. Arbery ended up dead. A lot of conflicting stories going around. I could do a whole rant on just that. But in this case, I'm gonna wait for all the facts to come out and see how the case is handled. But regardless, Regardless of what the facts state, and I am waiting for the facts, it looks to me like something that I've seen far too often. And recently we've had a spate of these particular incidents that have gone viral and have made the news worldwide. Case in point, this truck driver in Oklahoma City who delivered inside a gated community and was then asked for his papers by a regular old white dude just trying to make sure this guy was on the up and up. I ask you one question. I, no, it's none of your business, and I ask It is not. Okay. How do I make a wrong turn into a gated neighborhood? You do realize this is unlawful detainment, right? You have absolutely no reason and no right to hold me here to block me in with your car. You don't need to know anything. I will say, if you ain't a cop, don't never ask me for my fucking ID because it's going to turn out a lot differently than what happened in that particular situation. And then we got Breonna Taylor, who was savagely murdered while sleeping in her own bed by police. So yes, a lot of us already knew this. The news has made it more clear that being black, just the simple act of being black is indeed dangerous and in some ways could be considered a felony. Yeah, being black. This group of knuckle draggers is in no way representative of the majority of white people. In fact, I strongly believe they are the minority, but I believe it's instructive. And let's face it, these motherfuckers are just downright petty. But today I want to take a walk down memory lane and revisit the all time pettiest racist vigilante. That's right, Barbecue Becky. If you remember two years ago, a brave young lady decided to save the citizens of Oakland, California from a mob of two barbecuing African Americans. Cause we know how out of control shit can get when black folks start grilling meat. Yeah. Act like I ain't never had no barbecue before. But to her credit, she went about it the right way. She saw people barbecuing in the park, and what did she do? Called the police. I hear you have a problem with these gentlemen having a barbecue. Uh, it's illegal to have a charcoal grill in the park. No charcoal grills are allowed. Do you want to see it? That's right. With all the shit going on in the world, she decided to call 911 because these brothers had the audacity to use charcoal. Now, it's quite all right to build toxic power plants in black neighborhoods, have black folks drinking substandard brown water and maintain their housing around landfills and sewage dumps but god forbid they use charcoal out in the open park so be clear this is about public safety don't get confused by what this is not about it has nothing to do with their race of course it has nothing to do with race i'm sure that if she saw two white men barbecuing in that same park she would have got on the horn immediately and also dialed 911. should i call the cops on white folks playing frisbee all the fucking time if i catch them playing hacky sack i just tell the cops they got a gun. I mean, we talk about barbecue in here and the problem is charcoal. Listen, over the past week, the few times I did leave the house, I probably passed seven people that was barbecuing. Two of them was charcoal, four of them, nah, I'm just playing. I don't know what the fuck they was using. Propane, burnt, fucking leaves or charcoal because I don't give a fuck. That is the illustration of how nosy some people can be that you would even know that they're using charcoal as opposed to propane. And don't get it twisted. Becky was committed. Two hours. Two hours. She's just got out of shape. If you called the police for two hours and you're sitting here, the police aren't coming for you, my dear. Two fucking hours. She could have burned like seven crosses in that time. She's just not good at time management. You could tell even the cops were suspicious of this lady. Look how she responds when they ask what her race is. 
<laughs> my race doesn't matter. She is and white. My... And the reason I really wanted to revisit this is because I find the video very interesting and instructive. It shows patterns. This happens every time one of these incidents goes off. First, the Becky or Karen or Josh or Hunter shows up, demands some sort of action from an African American, calls the police, and stands there with the confidence of a young Mike Tyson. And then when the shit hits the fan, all of a sudden they start playing victim. I want the police to come and I've been waiting for two hours for them. Please, having a barbecue. Please, I, ha I need help here. Well, can I have my card back that you stole? Can I have my card back that you stole? Can I have my card back that you stole? Oh, so now you the victim. You done took somebody's ID, tried to take a picture of it, refused to give it back. Yeah, now you're the criminal. Now you crying about being followed. You've been there two hours. Why didn't you just go the fuck home? I'll tell you why. Because your need to have control over any and everything on planet Earth, especially black people who may not know their place, that will was so strong that your common sense didn't fucking kick in and just tell you to leave it the fuck alone. And notice, despite what the media will tell you about how dangerous black men are, notice these brothers in the background, not causing no problems, not yelling at this lady, not screaming at her, being very cool, calm, and collected while being harassed, I'm guessing for the millionth time, because as a brother, I can tell you, I've had many run-ins with racists. And at a certain point, you get fed up. And as fed up as these brothers probably were at that point, they still maintain their composure and then of course the coup de gras or the peace de resistance if you will that happens in all of these situations the crocodile tears and the collapsing into a crying fit can you back off yeah, sure. thank you We don't believe you, you need more people. Two years later and this shit is still going on. It has never stopped. And if I could give a little bit of advice to all you wannabe Beckys and Carls out there, I would say the most important thing I could tell you is to mind your own fucking business. And to anybody, black or white, that witnesses this sort of racist behavior, pull out your fucking cameras, film the whole damn thing, because we all know that even though in America you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, we know you you're gonna need that video to prove your innocence. And by the way, that lady's name is Jennifer Schlute if you wanna check her out on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. So I follow Ari Spears on Instagram. Very interesting follow. He drops a lot of gems on there. You should also check him out. And recently while following him, I started seeing that there was a beef bubbling up between him and Mike Epps. Apparently after the Ahmaud Arbery case went public, Mike Epps brought forward a solution that may stop us from getting murdered in the street by racists. You overkilling them. You shooting them a hundred times. And young black men, we got to stop giving them an opportunity to kill us. They killing us because they watching us kill us. Ari Spears was in no mood to let that shit pass. I want to give a stern message to my people, black people. We need to stop tying together black on black crime with cops killing black people saying that if we stop killing us, they'll stop killing us. Then they have some back and forth through Instagram and whatnot. A uh, comment section and on Aries page was lit. A couple of ignorant cats up in there, but a lot of dudes with some knowledge having a grown man discourse about the subject. And when it had reached a fever pitch, I guess Mike Epps decided to reach out and call Aries Spears. Mike Epps just called me just now. Uh, and again, for all of y'all that have been following this, as far as I'm concerned, it ain't a beef by me. It's a beef by Mike, because he's clearly upset. You talking about black people you need to unite? We need to stop fighting each other and killing each other. But yet you called me. It was nigga this, nigga that. You angry, you yelling, but we should fight it out. I agree with what Mike Epps said. Black people need to stop killing each other. And Mike, I tried to call you twice. Which is it? Do we love each other, respect each other, and keep it cool? Or is it all about, nigga, watch out, the streets is gonna get you. You telling me you ain't gonna put me in movies? Hypocrisy! You preaching love, but you talking about, nigga, the streets gonna get you. Come on, Day Day. 35, 45, 
55. So wait, Mike Epps is talking that we supposed to be brother shit, but then when he called Aries Spears on the phone, he talk about the streets gonna get you. I'm with Aries on this. Make up your mind, bro. First of all, you conflating issues. What happens in the black community in terms of violence and killings is completely and totally wrong. But we've been getting hung, lynched, beat, arrested unfairly, shot and killed for no purpose before it was violence in Chicago and Detroit and Atlanta. So no, when a police officer or a race is vigilante kills an unarmed black man or woman no it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that black people tend to smack each other up all the time or that black people cuss at each other or call each other niggas or kill each other in chicago and miss me with all that streets gonna get your shit 90 percent of you niggas who talking that shit ain't about to move nothing my dog just fucking showed up that's my dude right here he decided to make an appearance check this shit out you're this was not supposed to happen but we in here. You can't be part of the show. Don't lick the mic. Don't lick the fucking mic. Don't lick the mic. I'm not going to tell you what his name is. It's none of y'all business. Let me show you got your paperwork in order when you come knocking at my door. Because I got the team on deck. That was a good job. I'm going to give it to you in a minute. Where was I at? And what does we talk about? We talk about threatening the fellow fucking comedian because he decided to spark a conversation around race issues online that he decided to dis disagree with you. Not a street's going to get you. Thought we was grown ass fucking men out here. Not the way to move the culture forward by threatening the man with bodily harm because he has a disagreement with you. So even though I think Mike Epps is funny as fuck, I got a certain amount of respect for the career that he has built. Nah, bro, we're not going to be looking to you like you the Oracle for our sage wisdom and advice on these important issues put a quarter in your ass because you played yourself when i want to fucking laugh that's when i'm gonna look to you but miss me with that fake dick gregory shit mike epps when am i gonna stop talking about griselda as soon as they stop murdering this game between pray for paris a couple of projects that conway just got done dropping his album that's coming up the bsf release griselda is working overtime buffalo stand the fuck up but don't think for a minute that benny is slacking up he got this new movie coming out i think the premiere in buffalo is gonna be august 29th i'm even thinking about driving there and seeing what's popping i'm thinking about it and then i know y'all heard a few months ago drake has some great things to say about benny and it looks like the foundation for those two cats working together has been established okay so let me stop everything right here so we all on the same page let's be clear i know it's a lot of people that clicked this video that can't stand drake i was one of those people didn't like drake at all i don't know when the switch happened but at some point i began to appreciate the man's lyrical output even if it was some question as to who might be writing this stuff i do like the dude's aura the way he comes across this tough guy talk we know he ain't that but we also know lil wayne was not gang banging when baby found him at the age of 11 so we kind of suspend in belief on some of this shit yes i would be very interested to see what a benny and drake collab would sound like is it gonna be more griselda type or is it gonna be more drake moody emo kind of shit can benny get on the emo fucking track and get in that lane with with drake do we even want that from benny but the music ain't gonna be the be all end all for benny like the headline says right here he keeping his foot on the gas hey yo you see this i wish you could smell this shit you probably could smell it through the camera the butcher's breath rapper weed for real it's my own shit you never smoked this before you never had this before the butcher's breath we about to go global with this shit. Watch this. That shit right there look exotic. I think I will go to Buffalo after all. Hey, yo, Benny, say one for me and tell Virgil write brick on my brick, son. So while y'all hating, this dude is doing movies and he got his own strain. How's that working out for you? I did not tell y'all that this 6 9 shit was going to get out of control, that it was going to influence these youngsters in the fucking wrong direction where the shit is already happening. It's already getting out of control. Check this out. Uh -huh. Six to six to bar. But fuck it for one nigga. Haha. Porque seis seis me están dictando. Haha. But fuck it six to six is the new drip. Ha. El nuevo rapero, papá. Six to six the bars. Haha. Six to six the fucking trip, man. Haha. Motherfucker. Haha. He tried, but I am not scared of that dude. Hey, yo, but the dude making all that noise, that's never the one to be afraid of anyway. I thought we knew that. All that rah-rah shit usually turns out bad for the rah-rah man. And I forever stay forgetting to switch this headline. And yo, Mike Tyson still out here getting that bag between appearing in movies and hosting his own podcast. The ex-champ is talking some shit like he's back. Apparently, he wants to get back in the ring. And I don't know why these old motherfuckers pretend like they still got it. <laughs> A 
I would like to formally apologize to Mike Tyson, his family, and his fans if anything that I previously said may have been misconstrued or seen as disrespectful. But Evander Holyfield saw the clips and said, hold my beer. Real deal, don't do it. The only good thing that could come out of this rematch is Mike might hit you so hard that you'll start talking proper again. Be like, hi, my name is Evander Holyfield. Very nice to meet you. And I know you have seen the video that was released recently from one of these major cities with these cats lining up for these Jordans. One of those motherfuckers was 100% ready to risk it all to get a pair. But Grandpa Smitty reminded us all what real parenting looks like. You went in my goddamn safe and got my money. You stupid mother, you fucking crazy? Go into my goddamn say, give me my goddamn money, man. Is, is this all my shit? Huh? Is this all my yeah, fucking money? Get the fuck out of this stupid shit, you crazy motherfucker. You. I brought you in this world and I take you out. That's what my dad, mom, granddad, and grandma always used to tell me and they was serious. My dad whooped my ass so hard one time the belt started crying. So it's a reminder, no matter how old you get, if you got a real one like Grandpa Smitty, don't never think it's sweet out here because you will get that hair cracked and notice how dude didn't raise a hand and fight back. That's called respect. Now some of y'all like to use time out. That time out lasts about 20 minutes. It's a waste of time. Get that shit done in 35 seconds quick with a nice sturdy leather belt or if you really want to go old school a switch raise your hand if you had to go pull your own switch off the tree early onset PTSD in the building. Hey, I do want to thank everybody for clicking this video. If you like the content, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, have a conversation down in the comment section and share this with any and everybody you know. But until next time, I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.